Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I wasn't sure if I should make a separate Top 10 Best Indian Movies of 2021 list or not. I just did a Top 5 for Malayalam Cinema and one for Tamil and in case you are wondering, these will be the only two Indian film industries I'm doing that for. The reason is simple, I just haven't watched enough recent films of the other ones to justify such lists. I mean, I have watched way over 100 Indian movies last year, but most of our reviews tackle older ones. Since it was the centenary of legendary Bengali filmmaker Satyajit Ray, we watched and reviewed alone 15 of his films. When it comes to new releases, I have seen about 35. 15 Malayalam, 10 Tamil, 6 Hindi, 2 Marathi, 1 Telugu and 1 Kannada. So I think I can at least make a decent top 10 for Indian cinema overall. The video is called Top 10 Best Indian Movies, but I think it goes without saying that it's always more a Top 10 Favorite Movies list. It's my personal list that I would like to share with you and since there were so many more new movies released, I have of course only seen a small percentage and can catch up with everything. If you have been following the channel, I think you know that I watch a ton of movies already. Before I talk about my actual top 10, I want to make three honorable mentions. The first goes to the Kannada language gangster drama Garuda Gamana Vrishaba Vahana that was written and directed by Raj Bishetti who also stars in a lead role and gives one hell of a performance. It's a very stylish and metaphorical film with great cinematography and a fantastic soundtrack. The second goes to the Telugu language comedy Cinema Bandi, which was one of the most charming feel-good movies of the year for me. A simple story about a rickshaw driver who finds an expensive camera and decides to make his own movie with the help of other people from his village. And the third goes to the Marathi language road movie Kakani San Shivari, aka Ashes on a Road Trip. A wonderful little comedy drama with a great ensemble and a nice and subtle depiction of family. But without further ado, these are my personal top 10 best Indian movies of 2021. Number 10. Nayatu Martin Prakat's thriller Nayatu tells the story of three police officers on the run. It delivers on the genre stuff that makes for a good thriller, but it's also fairly grounded and realistic, which is probably in huge part thanks to screenwriter Shahi Kabir, who is a civil police officer in real life. The movie nicely combines dramatic elements with social and political commentary and it features three fantastic actors in the lead. Jojo George, Kunshaku Boban and Nimisha Sajayan. Number 9. Biryani Sajin Babu's Biryani is without a doubt the most graphical Indian movie I have seen so far. It's a very demanding watch as it tells the story of a young Muslim woman who has to face all kinds of hardships the patriarchal society is putting on her. Kani Kusruti gives a phenomenal performance and the movie has one of the best and most memorable endings I have seen all year. <laughs> Number 8. Minal Murali In a year that was filled with new Marvel content, we also got the very first Malayalam superhero movie, Basil Joseph's Minal Murali, a film that wonderfully builds on familiar tropes of the genre, but at the same time connects and colors them with the local flavor of the place and culture it is set in. Tovino Thomas gives a nice performance as the titular hero, but it's really Guru Zumazundaram who outshines everyone by his portrayal as the tragic villain Shibu. Number 7. Mimi This Hindi remake of a Marathi film really destroyed me. Lakshman Utika's film tells the moving story of a surrogate mother, played by Kriti Sanon, who is suddenly on her own when an American couple decides they don't want a child after all. Only that she isn't alone because her friends and family are there for her. I loved how the movie was able to tackle a really complex topic in this light-hearted, at times really funny, but also honest and touching way. <laughs> Number 6. Kala 
Tovino Thomas made it on my list two times, not just with Minal Muroli, but also with Kala, a rousing, animalistic, psychological action thriller that was directed and co-written by Rohit Vies. It's a hugely stylish and also quite cryptic and symbolic film about these two men who go at each other with full force. A really fascinating experience. Number 5. Zapata Parambarai and men who go at each other with full force you will also find in this intense and highly immersive Tamil boxing drama. Paranjit Sapata Parambarai is really bringing it in all departments. From the costumes, the makeup and hairstyles, to the cinematography, music and editing. It's a big production that's able to transport you to a specific time and place. Arya is doing a nice job in the lead role, but it's really the character of Dancing Rose who will steal the show. Number 4. The Great Indian Kitchen The year began with a bang for Indian cinema in general and Malayalam cinema specifically. Geo Baby's The Great Indian Kitchen is a sharp and hard-hitting criticism of the patriarchy. You might go as far as to call it a real horror movie, only that it's so realistic and the horror is that women everywhere still have to suffer through horrible things because of antiquated customs and traditions, religious mumbo jumbo or just the power structures established and held up by men. Nimisha Sajayan gives a great performance and it's a movie that's able to make a change. Hey Baba Ji, I can do one thing or do one thing. I can't do both of them. 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 Number 3. The Disciple Chaitanya Tamhani's Marathi language The Disciple tells the story of someone who is devoting his whole life to becoming a classical Indian vocalist. It's a film about sacrifice, suffering, self-doubt, obsession, commercialism and many other aspects. Though I am not having any connection to the specific subject matter of classical Indian music, it is nonetheless very relatable because it's so universal in its themes. And the filmmaking is just so precise that it has this absorbing, hypnotic feel that's almost impossible to oppose. Then people I was a revolutionary. Number 2. Sada Udam. Shujit Sirka's Hindi language Sada Udam is one of the year's best and most hard-hitting biopics and I would have loved to see this as India's official Oscar entry. Vicky Kaushal gives a great performance as the revolutionary Udam Singh who is assassinating one of the men responsible for the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. The film is so well produced with such an eye for details and historical accuracy and it is structured in a way that sets the actual massacre as the film's excruciating, heart-shattering finale. My number one best Indian movie of 2021, Karnan. No surprise here. Ever since I watched the Tamil action drama Karnan early in the year, I knew that it will definitely end up being one of my absolute favorite films of the year. Mari Selvaraj's second film after his incredible debut Pariyerum Perumal is such a force of nature, a rousing underdog story, a fight against social injustice, starring Danush in my favorite role of his yet as this village youth who is boiling with anger about all the shit going on around him until he finally leashes out. There is so much symbolism, so much strong imagery going on in the film. It beautifully introduces you to this world and it made me tear up several times as well as made me cheer, raise my fists and even dance along to the great music composed by Santosh Narayanan. For me, it's a modern masterpiece. I absolutely loved it and I can't recommend it enough. Alright, that's it. Like always, comment below and let me know what you think about my list and also let me know what are your favorite Indian movies of the year. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at The Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.